gone on so long, <coughs> why hasn't there anything been done in respect to, if it's up to the police to make the, the, um, the, the offence um, findable, why haven't they done anything? Um, I think it was about 10 years ago when I asked the council, they come round and done a survey of Brendo Road, and they sent a letter to most of the houses who were climbing, the cars were going over the curb into the, into the garden, and they put in their letter that they had to have a drop curb, because they were breaking the law anyway. Uh, and so, it's been going on and on and on. I know there isn't an instant cure, I know you haven't got the money to put lay in and God knows what, but the fact of the matter is, you know, it needs to be stopped, because there's people, now we've got a, a, a doctor's surgery, which is uh, situated in Brendale Road, uh, people walking up to there with the children in prams, sometimes they have to go on the road, which to me is wrong, and it's an accident waiting to happen to them. Thank you. Fair, fair, fair point, I, I think a lot of, in particular, councils will have exactly the same problems in every one of their rules. Yes, it is a common thing that is happening, yep. and, and that's not a, a reason to say uh, just what we can't do. I know you've had a, a, a response, I think, from our officers. Um, I don't know whether you're happy with that response, um, Alan, um, but we'll just make one or two points out of there. Will the council can take action where we have a traffic regulation order relating to waiting or specifically around the footway and verge parking? Will the council could take action where we can identify and prove to a legal <coughs> that a specific driver, not the vehicle, has caused damage to our property. I think that's pretty straightforward. Merseyside Police can take action where they can prove unnecessary obstruction. And Merseyside Police can take action where they can prove driving on the footway. Now, I think that all sounds okay, but I don't see much action no, that does take place. Yeah, yeah. And I think that if we can take that one step further, Everybody's got a motor car. 
On either side of that road, there's nowhere to put the motor cars. So they try to park. So they park. They try, they try their best to keep the cars off cool. the road. So vehicles can go down the centre. Now, if you, if you track that up and you go into Prenton Park and Prenton Dell, on all the way right up even on Water Park, <coughs> it's exactly the same problem. The only answer to you, mate, is that the yellow line down one side. And they'll still park on one pavement, but you'll still get your motor cars down. People need to get the cars away from the house. There's nowhere to park. Now, I agree totally, because I just pay the arse. If I could go down there, you know that. And it okay. really is bad. Fair enough. Just one quick, quick one. Quick one hour. Yeah, just go. Um, I did send a letter out to all the tenants within the area telling them the police will allow them to park two wheels onto the pavement or the disarm and two on the road. And 99% of them now are doing that, but we're still getting the odd few to park on the whole car. And oh. with them doing what our friends said, rather than park fully on the road, it's two wheels each, and you can get a bag. Okay. Sorry, Mr. Darling. To quote one of the slides we've looked at earlier this evening, it said Birkenhead is a great place to live, to work, and relax. I would like to add to that and to spend some money, a place to visit and spend your money. And what are the attractions that Birkenhead offers? to the tens, hundreds of thousands of visitors who come to Liverpool, short stays, day trips, cruise liners, all the rest of it. What does Birkenhead, as a council, as a community, do to get some of those people to come across the river? And that, that was the background to my question, asking Mr. Field where, how far he's got in his campaign to avert the closure of the Woodside Ferry. And your written response simply tells me that he's going to have a meeting. We have got a member of the Mayor's Travel. Steve, would you like to make any comments? Well, yeah. Funny enough, we had a meeting at Mayor's Travel today, and the very subject came up uh, as part of our, our discussions. Um, Frank Field and uh, Paul Doughty are indeed we engage him with uh, Mayor's Travel. Uh, there is another golden opportunity for the ferry to prove its worth. Where you heard me mention before about the closure of Hamilton Square in January. Uh, currently, a six, uh, we can fit 600 people on the ferry boat, and it's very rare more than 50 on the ferry boat in terms of a commuter service. But clearly, we do have a facility down there. We have the U boat story uh, and you know, a, a fine restaurant. I know there's a gin festival going on there. I might visit that at some point. Um, but so we are we are having um, things down there at Woodside. But I think it's it is part of the greater development of the Birkenhead plan. I mean I think we need to have more near the water and take advantage of the waterfront. I've said it in this hall before. Birkenhead has been accused of turning its back on the river rather than embracing the river. So I think there's lots of work to be done. I can assure you that within Mersey Travel Capital Programme, there is a sum of money to spend on the landing stage, so that the resources have been identified in the future to repair the landing stage. Seacombe has undergone gone some work, so there will be more opportunities whilst Seacombe is, be, is being repaired. So I think there's a general will amongst Mersey Travel members, general will of everyone in this room, is to get the ferry. But people don't use it in the numbers, only only 10% of all passengers, 10% of all passengers board at Woodside. Now that's happened for a number of reasons over the years. We've got to turn that round to, to justify it. But it is, it, it's not going to really function. It's not really going to function as a commuter service. I think it's, it, it's, its future is in as exactly as you said, tourism, heritage, and a regeneration of Birkenhead. So, so we're all pulling in the same direction, I think, sir. Do you want to come back and ask that? No, just continuing the same question. Okay. It is, it's, <coughs> where, where does Councillor Doughty fit in? Is, is he here tonight? No. <laughs> 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 Paul, 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 Paul Frank, man, or, when, 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 the issue, when, when the issue about the very strategy come up, and it, as I say, it was a strategy written by officers of Mayors of Travel. It was then passed on to members who made their comments clear of what we believed, and, and we moved the resolution at Mersey Travel to say that the Mersey, the, the future.
future strategy for the mayor's evening, including the building of the new craft, should be based around a three terminal strategy. So there's only three terminals, Liverpool, Woodside and Seacombe. So the direction of the strategy has been moved by members to, to hopefully to, to, to protect Woodside. When that uh, threat was perceived, a group of people got together and formed uh, a new group, including Mersey Ferry, friends and so on. And they have come up, they come up initially with some ideas to regenerate uh, uh, and how to move Woodside forward. At this point in time, the chair of Mersey Travel, Le uh, Liam Robinson, has approached them to say, look, we need to re-engage and start thinking about some new ideas of how to, to protect Woodside. So, so the, the answer is exactly right. The dialogue is back on. Um, the, the immediate threat is not there, I can assure you of that. But we do need to think long term about Mersey Ferries in its entirety. Uh, it is a costly service. It costs around about four million. It doesn't, doesn't, in terms of money, it doesn't commercially make sense. But it's part of our heritage. So I think there's a will for everyone to work together. That's okay. The best I can have. Paul was part of that friends group that, that was set up with Frank. So we're working together uh, as a wider consultation group about the ferries. I must say, I thought tonight we would be hearing some of the ideas which the council through and the MP were putting to Mersey Travel. And one thing I realised <coughs> is why is Woodside Ferry so unattractive in comparison with Seacombe Ferry? Why when I drive to Seacombe Ferry do I have a big car park and an overflow car park and I don't pay for either of them? When I go down to Woodside Ferry it's a pay car park. Why then is there a nice walk both directions from Seacombe? Two, 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 two things. One, you've answered your own question. Yeah. There isn't land available for free car parking. We, we have a very small car park at the front of the, of the ferry terminal that is in Mersey Travel's ownership. Um, the, the free car parking isn't there. The second transport reason is that there is no other facility such as Hamlet Square Station close to Seacombe Terminal. So the logic for the park and ride scheme was logically placed at Seacombe and that, that makes eminent sense in terms of the transport strategy. My view is that uh, as a mover of people on a large large number, both the ferry really has not, does, not, does not fit the bill as a commuter service at the moment and is moving towards <coughs> the tourism and regeneration aspect. It's a reason to come this side, it's a reason to come to Mersey side, it's an iconic sort of issue. And it, it, we are trying to put a sustainable strategy together <coughs> to keep it going for the next hundred years, so that's, that's the plan. You answered your own question, there isn't the land available for mass car parking, and if they, if they did, if people, just think about the sense of this, if people did park the car there, they are just as likely to hop on the train at Hampton Square as wait 20 minutes for a boat, so that, that's the answer. Okay, there was a second paragraph in my question. The Armed Forces Day? The Armed Forces Day? Yeah. Yes. The last time I listened to Councillor Fowler speaking was 7.30 on the morning of the 1st of July. Yeah. And he was officiating at the cenotaph outside this building. Along with him was an RAF officer and a party of four cadets, beautifully turned out. Shoes sparkling. They were a credit. The clock struck. Councillor Fouts had instructed us to keep quiet for two minutes, which we did. Who were we? There were seven of us. And looking around, there was not one working head councillor went there. There were seven of us. Three of them turned out to be parents of the cadets to get them to school later that morning. And the answer here is basically that the event in the Hampton Square, just a week or so earlier, the Armed Forces Day, that that was nothing to do with us, the councillor saying. Yes? Oh, yes. The National Armed Forces Day, it is a national event, and we're all chose not to get involved. Will did. According to this answer. I can assure you, sir, Will did get involved. In fact, I didn't know there was anything taking place at this town hall. 
but there was an event which took place at half past seven up on Collingwood. Yeah. 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 Trustee at uh, Shaftesbury Youth Club. Uh, face next to Tramia Rovers, for those who don't know us. I think we're a good seat, one of the best kept seasons in the world. Sorry. We're <coughs> uh, the second oldest youth club in the country. Uh, very vibrant club for young people. During the, during the week, 50 to 80 young people uh, attend the uh, evening sessions, and over 100 on Friday. We run 13 football teams uh, from under sixes through to 12, under 12s and up, up to 16 and above. Um, we have been discu in discussion uh, with the council for a number of years about the possible transfer, asset transfer, of the football pitches adjacent to our pitches. Um, we believe that we can provide a better standard of service. We have our own groundsman dedicated. Uh, we believe from the council point of view, we're obviously saving money in terms of management, <coughs> maintenance costs and any security costs that we currently provide. Um, we're looking to increase our revenue take. We, unfortunately, due to obviously the austerity measures, we lost £10,000 grant from the council this year, so we're trying to look at ways and means of filling that gap. Um, an example of if we had a bigger area, this on the 6th and 7th of August, we're holding a football tournament. We've already got 334 young people signed up for it. We could hold a much bigger tournament if we were bigger in that respect. Um, we can access grants that the council can't through the FA. We're affiliated to the FA. So we could apply for grants for such as an AstroTurf. So that's a, an all year round uh, playing facility. So we're looking for your support really in our discussions with the council to asset transfer this over. Now we know that there's been surveys being carried out and we were involved with them uh, at the end of last year, uh, but it's gone quiet on that ski side. So we're looking for your support, so when these reports do come, we could hopefully have your backing. Yes. Okay. Uh, established in 1886, uh, same time as Coca-Cola and Arsenal Football Club. So I think there's some years in this left. Uh, yeah. So I think it would be in good hands. Yeah. Okay, no problem. So I mean, 
part of my role is, is assets, so I'll take it up uh, with Joe and your yeah. feedback panel, and we'll get you the answer back as quick as possible. Okay? Right. Brian Swain. Oh. Rob Byrne. John Rich. <laughs> uh, I'll stand up. Can everybody hear me? You've got two there, John. Yeah, I've just, yeah, sorry. One of these is from Leonora. It's got my name down, but it's her question. <laughs> I, I've, I haven't hogged two questions. Anyway, the first question is, could you please tell me what is happening to combat fly tipping in Hoblin Road, Collin Road, Naylor Road, and Flaybrick Cemetery? And for people who don't know, that's in the Bids in St. James Ward. Yeah. Well, and the response that you've had... several deposits of, fly, uh, deposits of fly tipping emerging at the very top of these areas, which is a fact of shit itself. Uh, we have the council's enforcement team and kingdom investigate the fly tipping <coughs> and have positive feedback. We are also working with Magenta Living regarding the development of the existing houses with additional street cleansing. We will continue to work alongside Magenta Living when the new development is complete, completed working with housing officers, tackling waste and recycling and street cleansing and fly tipping. George, okay. George, could I just, um, just add to that as well, that um, because of the issues that we've been dealing with around the estate and the, the, the redevelopment of the estate, we have put in additional resources there. It has been treated as one of the growth spots and it has had additional uh, support and funding over and above four-week cleansing, and that was agreed at some of the meetings we held earlier this year with the residents, where we agreed we would put extra support in because of the uh, empty properties at the top onto the, uh, on, onto the back of the cemetery there. So it has had additional support as well. Okay, John. Uh, um, yeah. Next one. This, this is Leonora's question, but she's asked me to ask it on her behalf. So. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Oh, okay. okay nice. I, I'll wait till Steve leaves then before... <laughs> He's out of the room now. Yeah. So. Uh, could you please tell me what's happening to all the houses in and around Hoblin Road, Collin Road, Naylor Road, and some in Hoylake Road, as a lot of people have to live rough and those houses are vacant? I think it's Magenta Living, which is why Steve they are, left. Yeah. Houses. Um, well, I, I can assure you that a lot has been taken place. We've had three public meetings with the residents from, from the area as to what they'd like to see happening with uh, their property. I had a meeting this afternoon again with Magenta and Frank Field over the same issue. Uh, and that is, to be honest with you, I think it's, it's the residents that come up with the idea now, John. It's not ours, it's their idea. They'd like to see the, um, the work done to, to them properties, which will take them into two bedroom properties. We'll, we'll take out the back piece of the house, which is prefabricated, and move the bathroom up into the other room, which also then will allow them to revert back to two bedroom properties where the bedroom tax wouldn't apply. So therefore, hopefully over the next year, you'll see a big improvement in that area. That's where we are at the moment. Thanks for that. Thank you. Next one is then from Alan Donnelly. Again, <laughs> being busy, Alan. I'll be very quick, I think, uh, this one concerns uh, the weeds. The weeds. Um, I've got a before and after photograph here, but uh, I didn't get them sent in for the past year. Um, we think it's absolutely disgraceful what's happening in Brenton Hall Road. Uh, I've been round the borough and I've never seen a road like Brenton Hall Road uh, the way it's been built or laid. Um, there's about a two and a half inch gap, three inch gap either side of the road. And around the shopping area, it's just full of soil. And obviously when the rain comes, it washes it more <coughs> away. The grass gets cut, and all the bits and pieces go in, they start growing. Um, our team from the, the association um, went around the shopping area, which is about a mile radius, and we cleared up to five bags of weeds from just around the shopping area, because it doesn't um, give 
any sort of um, dealing for others to stop and go to the shops because of the state of the area. It looks absolutely disgraceful. Uh, we put them down four nights ago, but unfortunately they've grown again. Um, I would like the question that was answered was saying that the road was built a long time ago, but I can't think of any other road that doesn't meet the curve and why Brentondale Road, I think it's the only one that I know of, and I've been in the building trade, that doesn't meet the curves. Why was it built six inches short or three inches either side and soil put in and a bit of cement on the top? This has all gone over the years. The estate's 40 years old, it's going old. What can we do about it? They come round with the, um, with the, the um, weed killer, do it once a year. It's absolutely ridiculous. The rain, the sun dries it all up. It's not working. I know other areas are situated in the same situation as ours, but the shopkeepers, this is their livelihoods, they need presentation. And going through Brenton Hall Road, going through the estates, we need that presentation. We don't need people to see weeds growing through the in the gutters, not on the pavements, in the gutters and around the shopping area. And I think it definitely needs addressing urgently. Alan, fair point. Thank you, Chair. Well, if anyone has said it would make any difference, um, and we all get those complaints in our own boards, uh, and it's, I don't know where they, why these weeds have taken off in the last two years. It is 22 years ago when it started. Something changed, uh, and they, you know, they, they came out of our way, they, they did the weed spray. The weeds went, but now they're that, only that high, but that's when they should be killed off again. Now, if you talk to the people from the departments, they will tell you there's a certain time of the year when they're supposed to do it. So that is evidently October when they do it. But, but I'll, just, I'll just go back, back on that. There's some areas where you see in your past, and then some, some of them are actually three foot high for weeds, and it's wrong. That is wrong. And I, I've just got to suggest that out of our group here, and we have those environmental groups that meet as a task and finish group, that's one of the things that I'd like to, to look at uh, and, and find the reasons why we've got to this stage. Back end trees in particular, some of the entries are, although we, we put a lot of money into doing the entries, extra as a resource, as a council. So I've seen some of the entries recently uh, in Lock Ferry. In the court and all around, and, and some of those entries are important. Uh, people have to walk through the entries in, in, in weeds like this. It's just important. I appreciate all that, Chair, yeah, but the actual fact that the road is six inches short. I understand that. You know, if, yeah. if that was sure, yeah. Yeah. you know, we might get the occasional weed growing, which we could, you know, sort of look after. Is there a gap? Um, yeah, there's a big gap. I can show you the road yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I, I, take, I take your point, I'm going to see the road. It's yeah. the only road that I know that There's no other road in Berkeley. Now, they tell me about the concrete swelling or something. Yeah. I don't believe that because, you know, why do they build it does the road so tight? It, 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 it is a fact. It is. I'll tell you another road. There's another road which is not sort of avenue. And you can also take St. David's Road in Court. They've got exactly them concrete yeah. roads. But we'll, we'll, we'll take that off and right back to it off. Thank you, sir. And number 16, Keith Amber. Nope. Right. Well then, folks. Um, I think that that is the end of our meeting. Can I thank you all for your attendance? Thank you for your contributions. I'd like to see a lot more people here. And I think with uh, Moira, I'm going to put our heads together and see if we can get a better number of people to turn up. Because I think the more you get in, the better the meetings become. And it's a matter of course. So I will uh, endeavour to reduce that. Microphone George. Get a microphone next time. Yeah, I'll get a microphone. Can I ask a question? Is this, is this building, right over here, this beautiful building, is this the correct place to hold us?